Sup everybody, Soapbox Bill here with our first Justice League installment of DC Ember, Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. Before we go any further, let's uh, establish a little fact. Comics are weird. Anyone who's worth their salt as a comic book fan knows that comic book writers love the multiverse. Whether DC or Marvel, both sets love the multiverse with different versions of characters, different versions of events, and just universes where they can just have fun. In one Earth, Bruce Wayne becomes Batman after witnessing the tragic death of his parents. In another, Thomas Wayne becomes Batman after witnessing the loss of his family. On one Earth, Superman is raised by the Kents and becomes the scion of justice and hope that eventually becomes Superman. Or, on a separate Earth, he's found by Lex Luthor and becomes humanity's greatest threat. Since many different possibilities exist, and this movie goes into some of the most popular of the multiverse-hopping adventures in DC's universes. The Crisis on Two Earths is an event that has been seen in other series, but this movie takes it a step further. In this alternative version of the DC universe, Lex Luthor is a hero taking on the evil crime syndicate with the aid of his ally, the Jester. Three guesses as to who the Jester is the alternate version of. <laughs> uh, no one wins. Knowing the Syndicate's plan to build a world-ending bomb, Luthor travels to another alternate version of Earth to enlist the help of the Justice League. Other popular versions of the, this event include the Justice Lords from the Justice League animated series, Though in that version of events, the Justice League ends up becoming tyrannical dictators, trying to keep everyone safe because it is in their best interests. However, in this alternative version, Batman is instead Owlman, Superman is the crime boss Ultraman, and Wonder Woman is the sadistic killer Superwoman. Though, uh... Another difference between Owlman and Batman. Batman is hopeful uh, realism little with a little bit of pessimism, while Owlman is psychotic nihilism. So, watching them interact and fight it out is entertaining as all get. The whole plot revolves around stopping the crime syndicate from bringing... And bringing, blah, 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 and bringing peace to this parallel Earth that is ruled by fear and terror for so long. The fight between the Crime Syndicate and the League are very well animated and beautifully choreographed. Watching each hero take on their doppelgangers is a sight to see, and many reminiscent of those old RPGs where you end up having to fight your shadow self as a means of proving yourself, a la Final Fantasy, in a couple of times. The fight, uh, the music, sorry, looking at my notes here, the music is well put together, but didn't stand out as much in other films as I've watched. It did a good job providing ambience to the atmosphere, and it's definitely worth the golf clap, at least. <laughs> I'm a dork. It is... Also of note that the same actors that play the Justice League do not, in fact, play the voice of their doppelgangers. This could have been a very easy slapdash and lazy affair if that was the case, with the actors playing both roles as their mirror of one another. But this helps separate the characters between them. It makes Ultraman seem like a very different character than just an evil Superman. It makes Owlman a different character than Batman. Where there are differences, where there are similarities, there are also differences. Unlike in Superman Doomsday, the writing in this was much more well put together, the voice acting very great, and it led to some of the best moments with characters and emo emotional investment between them. So, final thoughts time. As a whole, it's a well-made Justice League film 
that shows not only the main six of the league, but dozens of other heroes and villains, both on our Earth and alternative versions on the this other Earth. Honestly, the most entertaining part of this movie was seeing all these alternative what-if versions of these characters with bad, ba ga ba bleh, bad guys being good and good guys being bad. Definitely worth checking out and maybe even a place on your shelf. This movie is definitely on par for a place in the league. Well then, I'll see you guys next time for the next installment of DC Ember. Peace out.